I'm your host, Dave Ribeiro from SteelTheSanctuary.com. And today we've got Tony Pauline with us. Tony is the consulting editor and NFL draft analyst for SportsSkeeto.com. Tony, welcome back to the Steel the Sanctuary podcast. Thanks for having me. Um, I want to start with the quarterbacks first. This is a, a little bit broader than just the Senior Bowl and Shrine Bowl. Um, we all know the big three, right? Uh, Caleb Williams, Drake May, and Jaden Daniels. Who's your quarterback for, and do you have a first-round grade on that player? Um, well, it's kind of a – it's kind of a <laughs> – there's two answers to that. I okay. think my quarter, quarterback number four uh, on my board right now, when I look at it, is J.J. McCarthy slightly ahead of Bo Nix. Okay. Uh, I think he is a second-round prospect that will be taken in the first round. Yeah, I So, I, I mean, if it was up to me, I wouldn't take him in the first round. But I think J.J. McCarthy is going to end up in the first round. Uh, what do you think of Spencer Rattler, like later on in the draft, second, third round-ish? Uh, I wouldn't take Spencer Rattler in day two. Uh, oh, really? Or anything. I mean, I, if, I, if I'm taking Spencer Rattler, it's in the second or third round of the last day of the draft. I mean, Spencer Rattler is a guy that I liked as a freshman in Oklahoma. I mean, he was terrific. Um, you thought going into his sophomore year, he was going to be a candidate for the Heisman Trophy. If I thought anyway, he helped lead the Oklahoma to a potential national title. And the bottom fell out and, uh, midway through that season. He was replaced by none other than Caleb Williams. And he's never really recovered. I mean, he's played good in spurts, in spots. He's had his moments. He's got the physical skills, but there's been no consistency. And he really, he's never elevated his game since his freshman year. And it's been up and down. And, I, you know, I, I don't like taking quarterbacks like that in the draft. I especially don't like taking him in the first four rounds. I mean, it is a pretty deep quarterback draft. Uh, I, I think with Spencer Rattler, you're looking at a late round pick. Okay. Do you have like a sleeper that you like outside the top six or seven? A guy that maybe to keep an eye on for the Steelers second, third round? Well, I, I mean there really aren't too many sleepers in the second or third round. So, uh, I mean, your second, third oh, round on. quarterbacks are the uh, Bo Nixes, Michael Penix. My, I, I think after that, you know, it, it's kind of later round guys, Michael Pratt, Devin Leary of uh, Kentucky by way of North, North Carolina State, Austin Reed of Western Kentucky. You know, if, if anybody can get Joe Milton figured out and, and get Joe Milton yeah. to basically go from being a, a great athlete with a huge arm to a passer and a signal call, they're, they're going to have something. I mean, I, I like Colin Schley, who had a couple of good years at Kent State. He went to UCLA, barely played last year. I mean, that's a bit of a sleeper. You're not going to, you're probably not going to draft Colin Schley. You're going to get him as a uh, undrafted free agent. You know, but time, well, more times than not, those guys, you know, rarely pan out. Well, I, I pan out as, in the sense yeah. that you're nothing more than spot starters. Exactly. Um, center might be the biggest Steelers need going into this draft. Um, obviously Jackson Powers Johnson had a big senior bowl. Anybody else we should keep an eye on from the senior or shrine bowls at center or interior? Well, I mean, Andrew Ram of Oklahoma, I thought played very well in spurts. Charles Turner of LSU was really good in the early part of the, uh, in the early part of the, uh, of the week. And then he really kind of petered out. The kid from Florida, Kingsley Egukon, a great way to butcher his name. Uh, <laughs> I thought he played really, really well. He was much better than I expected. Uh, he was pretty dominant all week. He moves really well on his feet. So you're looking at, I don't know if he's going to go third round, but I don't think he's going to last past the fourth round if you're looking at first center, uh, Egukon from uh, Florida. Has uh, JPJ cemented himself in the first round, you think, after the, the senior bowl? Uh, without a doubt. Yeah, yeah. I, I think he was, I mean, he only practiced what one and a half days. He came into the senior bowl injured and he was terrific that first day of practice. He was absolutely dominant. Uh, he's not just a powerful guy. He moves relatively well, showed ability getting out on the second level. He's a guy who <clears throat> in 2022, he was a terrific right guard for Oregon, moved into the center spot when Forsyth uh, uh, graduated and got drafted did a terrific job at center. And he was one of those guys that I thought, you know, you, you wanted to look at and see how he played. And, and, and if he played well, you know, he was going to uh, cement himself as a first round pick. 
he did do that. He didn't finish the week, but that was because of injury. It wasn't the Juan Jones situation from a year ago where he yeah. pulled himself out. Uh, he was legitimately injured while he was playing, even that first day. And I thought he was terrific. All right, let's switch over to tackle. It's supposed to be a, a really deep tackle class. The Steelers might be in the market for like a right tackle, especially. Um, I'm going to butcher this name. Taisi Fawagba is supposed to be the big name out of the senior bowl, right? Um, any well, other guys you like? Uh, there, were, there were a couple guys at the senior bowl. I thought I actually thought Tyler Guyton of Oklahoma overall played a little bit better, more consistent to Fawaga. <laughs> Excuse me. Fawaga had his problems with the Adisa Isaac, the speed rusher uh, from Penn State when he lined up at right tackle. Oh, okay. uh, but still, th- those guys are very close on my board, both Guyton and, and Fawaga. <clears throat> Fawaga's been more consistent. He's probably got a little bit more power. Uh, he's also relatively mobile. Guyton's the better athlete. He's better on the second level. But Guyton was less consistent in uh, Oklahoma, uh, in college at Oklahoma. Lost his mm-hmm. job, job for a part last year. Uh, lost his starting job at left tackle to Walter Rouse. Uh, but he's got much better upside. So you got to get between Guyton's ears and figure out what's going on there. I think the best way to compare Guyton and Fuaga is Guyton's got more upside, but Fuaga has a lot less downside. You know what you're getting with Fuaga, who is a very good – tackle there's talk here that the jets may take him at 10 i think that's a little bit early early for him to go uh but still in in the mock drafts that i have done he's always been in the middle of round one okay um wide receiver uh roman wilson's one of my favorite he was he really was really good at the senior bowl huh he was good till he he, uh hit his head on the ground he got the concussion uh and then they had to take him out but yeah i mean (laughs) senior ball and the shrine ball you're really starting to see an evolution at the receiver position in the sense that no more is it the six foot three, 210, 215 pound receivers that went out for the contested throw. You don't have to run four, three. You can be small, but just as long as you're quick and you can run good routes and you can get separation through your, through your routes. We saw it last year with Jordan Addison, who wasn't that big, who wasn't that fast, went in the first round, did real well as a rookie. That's what it's transitioning to, and that's what Roman Wilson did. I mean, Roman Wilson wasn't super fast. <clears throat> he wasn't streaking down the field in the one-on-ones, but it was tough to cover. Uh, it was tough to cover because he ran such great routes, and he got separation through his routes. He caught he caught everything that was thrown to him. He's a tough guy. If you ever watched the film, I mean, he plays. He's not big in stature, but he plays big football. And you know, the week before at the Shrine Bowl, there was a lot of that. A lot of those types of receivers that are going to be day three picks. Casey Washington of Illinois. Taj Washington of uh, USC, Malik Washington of uh, of Northwestern, actually Virginia. He started his Virginia, right? uh, college career yeah. at Northwestern. Smaller guys that a terrific pass catcher, Drake Stoops, Bob Stoops' kid. I mean, he was uncoverable during Shrine Bowl practices oh, really? and caught everything that was thrown to him. They're smaller guys. They're going to be day three picks, but I think they're going to be real good slot receivers, real good third or fourth receivers at the next level. And the guys that I just mentioned, like Roman Wilson, can also double as return specialists. Nice. Uh, what about Malachi Corley? Did you like him? Up and down. I mean, he runs decent routes. He's got a he's got a solid build. He catches the ball well. He's good running after the catch. He also That's has heard, yeah. uh, some returnability. Uh, I, I mean, senior ball aside, he was the number one guy at Western Kentucky for the past two years. There is some love for Malachi Corley at, in the scouting community as a day two selection. Uh, I have him a little bit later. We'll have to wait and see how he runs at the combine. I don't expect him to run anything super fast. I, I don't know if he's going to get under four or five. And if he does, it's not going to be much faster than four or five. But I think Corley fits in as that uh, third round, early fourth round area. You know, a real good receiver, but like a lot of the guys that I just mentioned, you know, there's no outstanding physical characteristic to his game other than the fact that he catches the ball well. Okay. Um, I don't know if you know, uh, are aware, Arthur Smith's the new offensive coordinator for the Steelers. He's always had a fullback in his offense. Is there a fullback you like even outside maybe the uh, Senior Bowl, Shrine Bowl? That well, could there, be were, there were no fullbacks at the Senior Bowl, Shrine yeah. Bowl. I, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a dying position. I mean, it's yeah. – uh, you know, you take a, a small college tight end and you, and you move him into a fullback. I mean, there are three fullbacks on my board for this year's draft, and none of them are going to get drafted. Derek Snell of Montana State, Mason Wake of BYU, Jack Stanine, who I haven't heard from in ages, uh, was, who was supposed to come out of Charlotte, and none of those guys are going to be drafted. I, I mean, it, it's, it's a rarely used position these days. 
it's sort of a position where you're going to have to manufacture it. Like I said, maybe take an undersized uh, tight end or not so much an undersized tight end, a short tight end. Yeah. A tight end that's yeah. maybe six one, six one and a half, and you turn him into a fullback. I, I to be the- honest with you, I mean, I don't remember one snap where a fullback was used at the shrine at the senior or shrine ball. Yeah, I figured they wouldn't be. Um, I thought maybe you you know of an other one from another school or uh, or something. Uh, let's flip over to defense. The defensive line, Cam Hayward's going to be thirty five this season. Um, the Steelers hit a home run with Keanu Benton last year, but they might be in the market for another one. Uh, anybody catch your eye? I know Darius Robinson got a lot of buzz coming out of the Senior Bowl, right? Uh, yeah, he was terrific. I mean, he looks the part. He plays to the part at times. There's some talk that he's going to be a first-round pick late in the first round. I think it's a bit of a reach as far as the Steelers are concerned. Um, you know, but as far as, you know, those those two-gap types of linemen, uh, I mean, Latou is more of a, a stand-up uh, mm-hmm. uh, stand uh, outside line guy, uh, uh, outside linebacker. Sweat and Jackson are more your uh, nose tackle types. Dwayne Carter in round two of of, uh, of Duke. I mean, he's 6'2", 305, 309 pounds. He was terrific. It's a matter of, you know, do you think he can play in a three-man line at the next level? Chris Jenkins, who was not at the uh, not at the senior bowl, is another guy. Um, really not that much as, after, as far for the – three, four types of defensive linemen at the senior Shrine Bowl. How about Braden Fisk? Did you like him at the senior bowl? Well, I love them, but where is he going to play at the next level? I, yeah. I mean, to me, Braden Fisk is your prototypical one gap, three technique uh, tackle. He was good going back to his days at Western Michigan. I, I remember I got notes on him from, you know, from when he played with the Broncos and he went to Florida State and he turned it up a couple of notches and he was omnipresent. Basically, what you saw at the, at the uh, at the senior bowl from Braden Fisk is Braden Fisk is the same thing we saw the past couple of years at Florida State prior to uh, at Florida State uh, and uh, Western Michigan. He's a go 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 type of guy. He plays with great pad level. He gets leverage on uh, opponents. He's got a great first snap. Uses his hands well. Technically and fundamentally, you know, he's very very sound. But the, the question for him is how big it. What's his actual playing weight? How much bigger can he get? You know, is he a scheme-specific type of player? Okay. Uh, let's switch up to linebackers. Uh, Cole Holcomb had a season and an injury this year, and they're a little thin at linebacker for the Steelers. Uh, Peyton Wilson's a guy that gets a lot of uh, press, but he's been injured a lot. Yeah. There's going to be a lot of red flags with him coming up. Huge red flags. And, yeah. and that's what the North Carolina State people told me themselves at the Shrine Bowl. I mean, I had known this about Peyton Wilson, you know, for the past couple of years because I've watched him since he was – tremendous uh, freshman at North Carolina State. And when you watch the film, he grades out as a top 45 pick. But when you look at the medical history, you wonder if he's even draftable. So, you know, it's all going to be in the eye of the beholder of the medical team. When they do the MRIs, when they look at the medical reports, when they tug on, they pull on those joints during Mm -hmm. combine medical exams. And it's not going to be the same for each team. I mean, some teams will red flag him, which means that, you know, uh, he's not going to get drafted. Some teams will give him a warning where they may dock it or a medical warning where it's, he's docked a half a round to a round. Some teams may say it's okay. So, you know, it's only the eye of the beholder of the medical teams, and, and that'll be determined in uh, literally in two and a half weeks at the Combine when Peyton Wilson is examined. But, yeah, there are a lot of medical questions that Peyton Wilson's going to have to answer and overcome uh, for him to, you know, be drafted where his tape says he should be drafted which is somewhere in day two. Any other linebackers at the senior bowl that caught your eye or even the shrine bowl? I, I mean, I like Cedric Ray of North Carolina. Uh, he's, you know, uh, I, the thing with the linebacker position now is, you know, your, your traditional four, three outside linebackers, your off the ball space linebackers are sort of a thing of the past when it comes to the draft. You do need them. Uh, but you know, they're see, you're seeing less and less importance on it uh, at the draft. Uh, you're seeing what ha- what's happening now is oftentimes they're taking oversized safeties, oversized college safeties, and they're moving them up to linebacker. But to answer your question, as far as pure linebackers are concerned, I thought Cedric Gray of uh, of North Carolina played really, really well. Um, Steel Chambers will had a real good uh, couple of days of practice at the Shrine Bowl. 
Gabe Murphy of UCLA, although he's more of a 3-4 outside linebacker. Easton Gibbs of Wyoming is going to be a day three pick. Uh, he was terrific at the Shrine Bowl. I, I mean, I was disappointed in Curtis Jacobs of uh, Penn State because, I mean, he's a pure linebacker who two years ago, he's a first-round pick. He's kind of fallen yep. off the radar. He was at Shrine Bowl practice, really didn't establish himself as what I thought he should have, which is one of the best players there. He was kind of up and down, nondescript. Uh, Curtis Jacobs, if you take him late third round, early fourth round, and you get him back to where he was two years ago, you're going to have a hell of a player on your hands. Well, that's, that's, a, that's a name to keep an eye on. That's a good little um, nugget there. Uh, let's jump over to cornerbacks. It's pretty deep cornerback class again this year for the draft, right? Um, Steals like the long athletic type corners now, it seems like, after drafting Joey Porter Jr. and a couple other guys. Who's your favorite corner at either one of those two uh, all-star games? Well, my favorite corner was uh, a kid by the name of Quantez Stiggers uh, uh, from the Toronto Argonauts who played oh, really? at the Shrine Bowl. I mean, huh. um, you know, you, you look at the roster and, and Stiggers is there. It says Toronto Argonauts. But the story is he went to college in 2020 at Lane. And there were a couple of a couple of uh, a couple of different things that kept him off the field. Obviously, Lane didn't play because 2020 was the COVID year. His father died, I believe, in a car accident, and he was just depressed. He went home. He was moping around. His mother said, get involved and, you know, get back into football. So he went to the fan control football league, which meant he was a professional, which meant he could not play college football anymore. Then he went to the CFL and uh, blew it up with the Toronto Argonauts. And he was horrific for all three days of Shrine practice. Terrific. I mean, he was outstanding. Uh, just day after day, making plays with his back to the ball. He goes, he's slightly under six foot tall. We'll have to wait and see what he runs at the combine. I have him now as a fourth round pick. I could see him jumping into uh, day two of the draft because, uh, you know, he was good with the CFL last year. He basically was good every day at Shrine Bowl practice. And then the other kid would be Quinion Mitchell, who, like like, uh, Powers Johnson, Jackson Powers Johnson, I I think you you came into the week wondering, is Quinion Mitchell a first round choice? And after three days of practice, you came out and you said, there's no way this guy's getting out of the first round. This this guy's probably not getting out of the top 20 picks. I mean, he was that good. Yeah, he he's was on been, my list know, to ask you. over six foot tall. Uh, he's a shutdown, shutdown corner. He was terrific in press coverage. He was a real good cornerback for three years at Toledo. If you watch the film, I mean, he's not a flash in the pan. He was a good player at Toledo. And, and at times at Toledo, it was tough to scout him because opponents wouldn't throw in his direction uh, because he was so good. Got to speak with him. He's a confident guy. You know, we're talking about the combine workouts, and he's saying how he wants to go there and set world records. He's (laughs) confident, but he's very level. And, you know, Mitchell absolutely – I think not only did he establish himself as a first-round pick, he was going to be now talked about as one of the first cornerbacks that are going to be selected in April's draft. Yeah, you you heard his name a lot coming out of the uh, the Senior Bowl. Uh, What about Kyrie Jackson? He's a long – corner right out of Oregon right that seems like a Steeler yeah. type guy yeah an underclassman who uh was invited to uh to uh, to the senior ball and he played well especially that last day of practice in fact I wrote about him uh I gotta watch more film on him uh but he made a couple of shutdown plays and again what you're looking for when you go on film or you go to these games can they make plays with the back to the ball? Do they get their head back around and track the pass in the air rather than face guarding, which is what most of them do in college? And I thought that Jackson did a real good job of that, especially the last day. He really impressed me. Excellent. Uh, last category for me, safeties. The Steelers are probably going to be in for a strong safety more than a free safety type. Uh, anyone stick out to you in, in either one of those bowl games? Uh, good luck to that. I mean, yeah, I know it's, a, that. I it's, mean, not, it's not a it's deep not, class, right? It's not right? a strong safety class. I, yeah. I mean, you know, uh, Cameron Kitchens, although I think he can play a free, sa- a free safety position on Miami, Florida. He was good at film. He had his moments at the senior bowl. Cole Bishop was solid. Uh, I'm looking at my list here. Evan Williams, you talk about Kyrie Jackson. Evan Williams of Oregon, who's more of your strong safety type. He was really good, especially the last day of practice, uh, making plays in coverage, not just run defense, but in coverage, had a real nice red zone uh, in the end zone pass breakup. And, and he's the guy who's going to go somewhere in day three. Okay. Um, before I let you go, Tony, uh, did you notice Mike Tomlin or any of the Steelers guys spending uh, an exorbitant amount of time with any particular uh, 
prospect out there or any um no, any behind the scenes I, I stuff? Mean, I didn't. I don't really do that too much anymore. I, I was <laughs> I was the guy who started that back in two thousand. I, I, I'll be honest with you. I don't even go on the field anymore after practice because the practices are basically fifteen minutes apart, and I just sit stay where I'm at and talk to people. I didn't see it. the only thing I heard uh, coming out of uh, out of practice and haven't really looked at this closely, but I was told that the Steelers are in love with Isaiah Adams of uh, Illinois, guard, right? who had yeah. a terrific uh, senior bowl three days in a row. If you watched Adams at Illinois, he played both tackle spots. He played guard. He was moved all over the place. And he was, you know, he was just, just like Jackson Powers Johnson, except he did it three days in a row. And he oh, matched everybody. And he definitely fits the Steelers system. You're looking at a day two pick. <clears throat> you said center. You know, if they're looking for another guard, I don't know that Adams can play center. If you're looking for another guard. I think Adams is a guy to keep an eye on day two. Oh, that's a great nugget. Thanks, Tony. Um, as always, really appreciate your stuff. Uh, you're one of the most knowledgeable guys in the draft that, out there. I really appreciate you coming on. Um, you got anything to plug? You got the new the new website you're a part of? Um, well, yeah. I, well, it's not mine. It's Sports Skeeter, which is a worldwide, yeah. worldwide website. Um, so all the draft information will be there. And, you know, we are taping this on a Friday, and we are really kicking off our mock draft simulator today. Okay. So, Interesting. Uh, all you guys who like love playing with the mock draft simulator, you're going to love this. We will have uh, four. We will eventually have a, up to 450 players in the mock draft simulator with scouting reports, so you can find out information on those players. There are trades. There are trades that the the computer will offer you. You can offer you you can offer or, or give a hypothetical trade and see if the computer offer accepts it. You can play three rounds. You can play five rounds. You can play seven rounds. You can go at a slow speed. You can go at a fast speed. Whatever you like, but the mock draft simulator, I think a lot of people are going to like it. And we're kicking it off today, Friday, February 9th. Uh, in fact, uh, once, once I'm done here, I'm going to put the uh, tweet up. So uh, I, I think that's something that uh, Steeler fans are going to like a lot. I'm a big draft guy like that. So I'll be on it too. I'll be checking it out. Again, thanks a lot, Tony. You can find Tony on um, Twitter at, at Tony Pauline. Um, again, thank you a lot for coming on. And we'll talk to you again maybe later on down the line. Thanks for having me, Dave.